and iron. Let's talk Mark 8 tuning. So uh, we did just release uh, as an early Christmas present our Mark 8 GTI tuning. Uh, we released uh, our Stage 1 ECU and Stage 1 TCU tunes. Um, and we released them with, with a two-week really aggressive special pricing sale because we really want to get it out there and get in, in the hands of as many people as possible with the goal of people flashing their cars and having positive feedback. And I think there's probably a lot of people that will wait until they hear that. And we're confident the feedback will be positive. So, um, but, but now is a great time to buy, um, we're like what, 30% off. That's correct. So it's, it's, it's almost too cheap because it's confused people uh, as to why it's so cheap. And uh, sorry. Yeah. So if you'd like to pay us more, feel free. You can wait. Um, but our stage one ECU tuning currently is uh, on sale for $455. Normally will be $650. And that's the price that will, it will go to on January 7th. Um, and that does include a free stage one TCU tune. Uh, and I'll, we'll explain a little bit about our, about our stage one TC tune. I think that's where some of the confusion is coming. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> stock, we we measured about 223 wheel horsepower, 263 wheel torque. Uh, our 90, 91 octane tune, which is just an ECU flash, no other modifications. Uh, wheel horsepower jumps to 300 wheel and 355 torque. I mean, that's a substantial 75 plus horsepower increase. Uh, truly insane. Uh, 93 jumps to 309. So you get about another 9, 10 horsepower there and another, you know, 15 foot pounds of torque. Yep. And on E85, which is just fill your tank up with E85, uh, wheel jumps to 332. Um, yeah. Yeah. 110 horsepower increase over stock. It's insane for, for you know, GTI. 362 and this is again just the flash yeah. um you know we're, we're estimating you know in the high 300 to 400 these, these numbers stock. were on a stock car stock intake stock intercooler stock exhaust mm -hmm. tip, tip to tail yep that's all you need to do now of course if you do our intake or some other mods the, the power can increase even further um so do you want do you want to talk a little bit about some of the features now um, I mean, it's a stage one file. Uh, the features are going to be, you know, we've got them listed, but it's, it's, you're going to see a more refined driving experience. Um, it's going to be a hell of a lot faster. <laughs> um, we are offering both, uh, you know, there's, these are pretty new cars not a lot of guys have many heavy mods on them. Um, and from what we've seen in the past and are seeing on these cars, the, um, depending on how you drive, if you have a manual, the stock clutch can be questionable at these kind of numbers. Mm -hmm. So we do have reduced torque files up on the server for every um, every octane that we offer. Yeah. Um, there's gonna be a reduced torque off them as well. Um, just to help, you know, the, in the interim, your your peak horsepower number, I think is pretty much identical. Um, it's just gonna bring that yeah. that low end torque down for you. I think I think actually the low torque file is, is a better driving experience in my opinion with, with the two wheel drive cars yeah. yeah you've got to have a pretty well set up um rig to, to run and the, the sensation of acceleration is actually a little bit better because because the power band is more progressive so you get that increasing sensation of acceleration as opposed to the big surge of power which actually tapers off because it's so much torque down low um and, and like nate said I, I don't even think the cars would be any slower yeah but it's it's definitely needed on these manual transmission cars that yep, that, that have a stock clutch. Yes. Um, um, yeah, I mean, Amax has been increased. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of what else we've, we've, we've snuck in here that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thermal, thermal, thermal management mm -hmm. uh, improvements. Optimizations. Just optimizations there from the factory just because we're running, you know, a bunch more load and torque. Um, yeah, and then the E85 mapping is you know, literally pumping the E85. And yeah, you're off to the races. Which is which is from a horsepower standpoint, it's huge. Yeah, and, and remember gives you the most power. Yeah, this isn't flex fuel, so this is going to be you know just an E85 file. You want to run, you know, we've got a bunch of videos up on how to yep. you know, how how you should kind of handle that. that you you want to get a gauge, switch over. Get, get yourself an E85 content analyzer so you can 
you know, when you fill it up, you want to be at least E70 yep. before you go ripping yep. on it. We'll be we'll be working on E60. You can go down to E6. Um, we'll be working full flex fuel side of things, but for now, it's going to be a, a straight up uh, E85. When you do the flex fuel, you have to add sensors and wiring, and and it's it's more um, yeah. You know, there's just a lot more involved in, in getting the, the flex fuel system in there because you got to you know splice into the fuel line, get the sensor installed, get it wired into the ECU. We will we will eventually do flex fuel, just like other companies are talking about as well. But uh, for now, we're the only option with you know, full E85. Yep, and uh, it's it's a great option. Yeah, and these fuel systems are are thus far proving to be quite quite an upgrade yeah. from what they were what the Mark Sevens were. So let's talk about our Stage One TCU tune. If there's any confusion about that, yep. this this is this is kind of the same. Uh, model that we did for the B9. Mm -hmm. Our stage one TCU tune is not a full featured TCU tune. So it's not really going to change, um, you know, your shifting or give you launch control, any, any, any extra features of that. We are uh, rescaling the torque settings in the TCU. The TCU is actually what controls how much torque the engine makes. Well, it caps. Yeah. It, it, caps it, it. it has a hard limit that it, that it will put. In That's right. Speed. It limits the amount of torque the engine makes. Um, and, and when we talk about torque, we're talking about peak torque anyways. Yeah. Um, and so our stage one TCU file rescales the factory TCU to allow the factory TCU to permit higher torque from the engine. Uh, you can fudge this in the ECU tuning, um, but you would still be limited at a, at a peak torque level. And so by doing this, a lot of people are on the market are calling it a patch file. Um, I don't know. If, I don't know where that term came from. It's not necessarily. We're not patching anything. We're rescaling torque. Yeah, it's, it's a, it is. It does have remapped. It, it is a recalibrated TCU file it, for the for the additional floor. So we will eventually release a stage two tune, which will which will sell for money, and you'll be paying for that, just like some of the other companies' stage one yep. TCU tunes. Um, and so you know later on, when we release our stage two file, which is too far off, um, that will be a, a file that you pay for, and that will have. You know, enhancements, launch control, and shift speed, and yep. you know, even potential uh, rev limiter changes and things like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right now it's going to have the, the stock shift points. Um, we do um, alter the way the AMAX is enabled, or, or, or you know, we we jump out of AMAX quicker on these because you have to do a bunch of remapping to get those to work correctly. That'll be in the stage two file. Um, if you leave them stock, they're pretty terrible. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, increased uh, some flex pressure is just to follow along with the added torque output. So that's why we're including this TCU file at no charge for free. Yep. And um, what we've done in the past too, is we've offered a discount for anyone who has the stage one, when we release our stage two, who bought it previously. So yeah, we'll, we'll probably follow the same model for this when we, when yeah. we work on the stage two stuff. Now we got some questions coming in. Um, how is your, how is the reliability of your tune compared to Unitronic? I mean, we're not really familiar with the Unitronic tune or, and how reliable it is. Um, I don't know if anyone's been had any issues with the Unitronic tune or not. I haven't, we again, we just focus kind of on what we're doing. We don't really follow too much about what, what's going on out there. However, um, if you watch, go on our Uncut channel or go back and watch any of our YouTube videos talking about tuning, our philosophy is always to keep all the factory safety features and even build and enhance them. So things like the the TCU tune or stage one that rescales the torque settings to allow a higher safe torque level. Uh, our thermal management strategies, which brings power and load down if there's any uh, engine overheat, a potential for engine overheating. Before it overheats, we're already managing the temperatures and bringing them down. Um, we don't uh, fudge or work around any of the factory safety features. We keep everything in place. So, you know, uh, our tune is as safe as the factory tune. In some cases, we're making it even safer than the factory tune. And uh, again, we can't talk about anyone. We, we don't we, really we don't know about anyone else's yeah. tune, but our tune is very reliable. Uh, we are not knowing, known for unreliable tunes. In fact, um, we are market leaders in the B8 and B9. We've been doing Mark 7 tuning for five years. We've never had a blown motor. And, and, an issue with damaged motor, any reliability issues whatsoever. Um, now there are things that that will prop up <clears throat> in the tunes that could affect the, the running quality. That's not a safety issue, but maybe there's a when it gets really cold, there's a misfire or the idle could be a little rough during certain. And we always jump on those and we offer 
uh, fixes for those as quickly as yeah. possible. And, you know, and, and anyone in the B8 or B9 market or the Mark 7 community will say that, you know, we're really good about jumping and fixing those things as yeah. soon as we find out about them. Yeah. And we do everything we can to test as, as do. many situations as we can. We've, we've taken the car driven up to altitude, various temperatures and conditions and all that. So, you know, we try and cover our bases as much yeah. as we can before, uh, before release. Why do you offer stage one TC tuner for free? I just talked yeah, about just that. Did. Hopefully that answered that. Um, what TCUs are currently supported for the Mark A GTI? Um, I mean, the, all the ones we've seen so far, I'd have to, I don't have an exhaustive list in my head right now. What's the time frame for, for surround, supporting the unsupported TCUs? That's as soon as we announce that they are supported. Yeah, we're, we're, we're working on all that yep. every day. Uh, what file should I run if I have a manual transmission with a stock clutch or an unsupported TCU box code? You can just run the reduced torque. Um, like I said, your your driving experience is going to be most the same on all these. And if not, it, like like what I was saying, it's actually, it depends on what you want out of the motor, but the top end is going to be essentially the same um, power-wise. And uh, yeah, it'll just be a little lower peak torque, but that's, that's about it. It's still going to be a lot faster than stock. Uh, with 034 Motorsport and Racing Line being the same company, in quotations, we're not the same company. <laughs> How is 034 output so much higher than Racing Line? They've only really announced for, I think, just uh, basically 91 Octane in general. They just have their the 98. Octane. They don't have any 85 tune. 85 I don't know what they've done for 93. Um, so we, we, are, we are part of the same group. So it's kind of like Volkswagen and Porsche. Or Audi and Porsche are both part of Volkswagen Group, but they operate. They, you know, Porsche and Audi have their own engineering teams, their own engineering efforts, their own products, and everything's different. Um, but there's some shared technology, and you, know, you see that DNA. So that's the same thing with us. But um, the Racing Line tune is not a rebadged zero three four tune. Um, they they have their own calibration team. They did their own calibrations. Um, the U.S. market is a little different than the European market. Um, uh, from from what we understand, we know the U.S. market. The U.S. market, everybody wants the most power, the most torque, the fastest. They, they want to be running. Everyone wants to run nines. They want to do wheelies. You know, <laughs> Americans are fucking crazy. They just want to send it. Apparently, the European market is more refined and uh, less concerned about the utmost stringing the almost power and torque. Um, and I think the OEM plus kind of, it's like stock, but a little faster is, is more what the European market's going for. That's from my understanding. So our, our products will cater to those markets differently. We are, again, two completely different companies. We have different engineering teams, but we do collaborate and work behind the scenes whenever it comes. Should be noted that our first stuff plus. Yeah, I mean that's not to say that like we just spoke about like all this. Well, why would you even say that? Um, it's also you know we're we're comparing. We really want to go there. Yeah, we're comparing dyno numbers again. We we always come back to that conversation too. Is like, you know, it's that's it's it's it, you have to take all of that with with a educated grain of salt there and just look at the deltas, look at you know kind of the power band, what what the strategy for the file is. But to compare internet dyno numbers back to back to back and, and you know, take them at full face value is, is always difficult. But, but, but with that said, I do believe we are producing the most torque of any sure. market. Yep. And then the ED5 team. Takes well, that's, and that's, that's a, yeah, that's a huge, huge difference there. <laughs> um, what ethanol content range does the E85 file accept as low as E60, um, but certainly anything E60, E65 to E. E85. Yep. You don't have to be at E85. Uh, yeah, most pumps we see are between 70 and 80. That's yeah. kind of that's kind of the average. I've never I've never pumped and gotten less than 70, but it's possible. Which is why I said 70. <laughs> Will you bring flex fuel to the Mark A GTI Uni and IE have both teas that they'll be bringing? Yes, uh, we are working on that as well. I think everybody wants to offer that. Um, for, for us, it always comes down to flex fuel is nice. It's a nice to have, but if you can just fill your tank with the eighty five, you know, and we don't need yeah, and and you have the ability the the to reflash these ECUs at home, so it's at home or at anywhere if you have, mm -hmm. if you have a battery. Trip. 
charger and a Wi-Fi connection, you can do it. Um, has development started in regards to placing the Mark 8 R Turbo in a Mark 8 GTI? Yes, oh. that's definitely something we will be offering. If your TCU version is not yet compatible for the TCU tune additional clamping force, what kind of torque can we expect with the ECU stage one tune only until the additional version is available? We'll get some more information up that show the basically the stock TCU files. Um, on 91 octane, I have those numbers handy right now, but it's it's not much less on that file. We'll, we'll get them all up for comparison. I don't think we're, we're, we're not leaving each torque on the table with stage one, um, stage one TCU. This is asking for with a stock TCU. Stock TCU. Uh, yes. If you have a stock TCU, where does your torque land? Uh, we'll, we'll put those numbers up for you so you can see it. Uh, I want to say 91 wasn't that di hugely different. Kind of give you an idea of things. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I'll get all that published. If you had to compare the IS38 Turbo to the new Garrett in the GTI, is the IS38 better? I'd say they're. Very similar. About the same. Yeah. Um, the numbers we're seeing are, are very I30, IS-38-esque. Um, yeah, like 400 crank. I mean, yeah. that's right. This, this turbo nice. comes on earlier, though, so you're actually getting a little more power man than the IS-38. It seems like Audi is just getting, uh, I mean, I'd say turbos in general, but the, the turbo tech in these cars keeps getting better and better. Yeah. The turbos spool up faster and and flow more and make more power. Yeah. They're just more efficient. Uh, the factory turbos are very good. I mean, look at the. The B9 S4, we're doing like 450 crank easily, you know, with a stock turbo, and it spools up very fast. B9 S4, yeah, more than that, 500 crank, yeah. So, yeah, on the 85, 500 crank. <clears throat> All right. Um, what are modifications should I look at adding to improve power? Um, I mean, it's all the supporting stuff we recommend. So uh, intercooler is going to be one of the first ones that we're on there and then intake. Um, intercooler will definitely help for consistency when you're doing, you know, pull after pull after pull. Um, definitely our street density motor mounts, our dog bone inserts, our S34 intake will all work very well. Um, take, take a look at our whole catalog, though. Uh, and we're, we're coming out with more and more products for that platform all the time oh interesting somebody brought up an, an interesting point i hadn't thought about it's, it's, this goes back to why the numbers might be different in the uk we have different insurance to you guys which we pay through the roof for modifications mm -hmm. why most people don't go as far as the us so there you go there's a lot of factors that, that change market you know market demands uh, so mm-hmm